Flight 5 is so close. And beyond the ambitious goal of landing the booster on the chopsticks, there's one crucial element that has captured the huge attention of space enthusiasts, the heat shield performance. So what challenges still remain for the heat shield, and what has SpaceX done to tackle them? Let's find out in today's episode. The fifth launch of the Starship is just around the corner. All you SpaceX enthusiasts who've been following the intense testing of this colossal spacecraft, you've probably seen heat tiles falling off due to the intense vibrations from the Raptor engine's incredible power. After the IFT-3 launch, dozens if not hundreds of heat tiles were found floating in the water and washing up on beaches near the launch site. It even sparked a memorabilia industry on eBay. This time, for the fourth flight, SpaceX and Elon Musk have made upgrades to address this issue, promising better results for the launch. One of their latest moves is refining the heat tiles on the nose cone and flaps after a month of thorough heat shield evaluations, which I'll explain in a bit. When it comes to heat tiles, the main factors are adhesion, heat resistance, lightness, and reusability. However, the most visible issue in Flight 4 was the adhesion of the heat tiles. Despite having a thermal fiber blanket behind the heat shield acting as a second layer of protection for the Starship, the falling tiles could weaken certain areas of the hull, affecting reusability. Moreover, with Musk's goal of a one-hour turnaround, the Starship needs minimal refurbishing after each flight. Currently, the heat tiles are fitted very tightly together, which is problematic. Without gaps for expansion and contraction due to temperature changes, cracking can occur. The Starship's hull undergoes extreme temperature changes, from ambient temperatures down to 66 Kelvin, about negative 207 degrees Celsius, in the LOX, liquid oxygen tank during fueling, to several thousand Kelvin, thousands of degrees Celsius, on the exterior during re-entry. Most heat tiles are attached to the Starship using smooth pin, with each tile being attached by three small legs. Therefore, the contact area with the tile isn't extensive, and under intense vibrations, especially during the first 160 seconds of launch, they could completely come off. So to address the adhesion issue, SpaceX needs to consider the thermal contraction and expansion of the heat tiles under sudden temperature changes and strengthen the smooth pins. Increasing the spacing between the heat tiles beyond the range of vibrational movement could be beneficial. This means designing expansion gaps, creating gaps between the heat shields to allow them to expand without putting stress on the structure. This adjustment might require changing the tile shape, making them protrude more like pyramids. By increasing the height of the tiles, the plasma flow can be disrupted further away from the ship's body, minimizing damage. Additionally, they need to improve the attachment pins and increase. Sicy material could be chosen for testing due to its ability to withstand high temperatures. Additionally, they need to improve the attachment pins and increase the holding force of these metal pins. Current attaching method. Currently, SpaceX uses smooth pins for attaching the heat shield to the body and adhesive for the nose cone and fin areas, which are curved. Ever wondered why they use a combination of both methods? In reality, SpaceX only uses adhesive for heat shield areas with complex shapes on the surface of the ship. Interestingly, the heat shield temperatures on the vehicle's body might be slightly lower due to the cryogenic propellants at around minus 200 degrees Celsius behind them. The nose cone and flaps don't have this cooling effect, which explains why they're thoroughly quality assuring the Starship's top. The nose area won't have cool liquids or gases on the other side to act as a heat sink. In these areas, the tiles have different shapes compared to those on the body to conform to the curvature, joints, non-flat surfaces, and sharp edges. They can't simply be snapped on and must be glued on instead. The tiles bonded here don't have a thermal blanket behind them so the gaps between tiles also need to be filled. This might explain why the heat shield tiles in these areas appear much thicker. It's reasonable to assume that if the heat shield in these areas gets damaged, replacing it could mean replacing the entire section, solutions and predictions. Additionally, the heat shield tiles on the nose cone and aft flaps have a lighter color than the jet black tiles on the vehicle's body. They're gray. It's not out of the question that SpaceX might be using a different heat shield material for this area, perhaps a material containing carbon. Materials with carbon are very good at withstanding heat and are also relatively budget-friendly for production. The standard heat tiles are black. SpaceX hasn't revealed much about the heat tiles, but if I'm not mistaken, it's likely made of silicon dioxide. The top of the tiles is coated with a waterproof glaze, giving them a deep black and glossy appearance. You know what? If silicon is combined with carbon, we would have the typical gray-colored compound silicon carbide, SIC. Yes, what I mean is that SpaceX might be testing SIC material on some of the Starship's heat shields. SIC is an excellent heat-resistant material that can provide effective protection for the spacecraft during high-speed atmospheric re-entry, similar to the command modules of the earlier Apollo program, 
when they returned from the moon at around 11.1 kilometers per second. SIC material could be chosen for testing due to its ability to withstand high temperatures and good mechanical properties, making it a potential candidate for Starship's heat shield tiles, especially for missions to and from the moon where the spacecraft will face extremely high re-entry temperatures. As mentioned, due to the small contact area between the tiles and Starship's surface, attached by pins, the tiles are prone to dislodging. However, SpaceX won't use adhesive bonding across the entire Starship, even though increasing the contact area to 100% would provide tremendous adhesion strength. Imagine this. With 18,000 tiles on the vehicle's body, bonding that many tiles with adhesive would be incredibly time-consuming. NASA's space shuttle used adhesive bonding. Each heat shield tile was individually designed and could only be attached to a fixed position on the shuttle. These tiles were manufactured with specific sizes and shapes to fit onto different parts of the shuttle's surface, and each tile had a unique serial number identifying its installation location. And they spent a considerable amount of time on just a few tiles. And once it came off, refurbishing it was extremely complicated. In contrast, Starship's 54,000 attachment pins can be installed using robotics and automated processes, while the 18,000 tiles, a significant number, would require manual installation. That's a big reason SpaceX has opted for a mechanical attachment mechanism. SpaceX needs to manufacture and assemble Starship, and the heat shield in particular, at the highest possible rate. Because most of Starship's tiles, especially the ones on the body, are mass-produced and share similar characteristics. If you lose a tile when attaching them with pin legs, you can simply pop a new one in. Recent observations show that SpaceX has changed from the old blue adhesive to a new red one. And again, if I'm not mistaken, it's a silicone adhesive. And the red silicone adhesive has excellent heat resistance capabilities, better than normal varieties. Although they haven't disclosed any information about this change, officially, it hints at innovations in the Starship. They've also tested the tile layer by having engineers use vacuums to suction the tiles, checking if they're adequately adhered and need reinstallation, indicating their dedication to the heat shield and potential improvements to the pins behind it. SpaceX has undergone a major overhaul of their heat shield, including the use of new thermal protection materials and advanced secondary protection methods. This is a very aggressive step forward, and I'll be diving into the details in one of the upcoming videos. I'd love to hear if there's any other aspect of the heat shield that you think I should research and discuss. However, at least in the Flight 5, we could witness part of the ship's re-entry process, the most dangerous part of a space flight. Well, it seems SpaceX allows us fans to access the Starbase site and is quite open in sharing information, but sometimes they can be quite tight-lipped too. But it's also fun that we can speculate and discuss together. So drop a comment below. It's exciting to speculate and discuss these cutting-edge technologies together. I hope I've provided you with detailed and useful information about Starship's heat shield ahead of Flight 5. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.